Well, thank you so much for this uh, new invitation, for being uh, virtually with you there in uh, Slovenia to talk about the uh, cusp overlap uh, for Tavar implantation. So we have a different uh, piece of information and that made the evidence that make the evidence uh, for Tavar very uh, strong. We have evidence uh, from the extreme risk patient, the high risk patients, the intermediate risk patients, and then the low risk patient. But also we have some uh, limitations that could uh, in a way limit the application of TAVAR for uh, different patients. One of the uh, issues is about durability. We scare especially for a young patient to have to exchange the valve during the follow-up. And this is a limitation that we still have pending information for the long-term follow-up. But as far as we know, the ADR follow-up of the Notion trial seems uh, to be enough for octogenarian patients. The other limitation, uh, it could be conduction disturbances, which can appear, especially when we are applying uh, TAVAR devices and mainly the self-expanding devices. The reason why we have a conduction disturbances is because the conduction system is very close to the LVO tract, and especially the left bundle is superficial after uh, the muscle septum, as you can see here in this uh, fish uh, fever. Different uh, pacemaker implantation rate has been occurring uh, during the years and uh, with the experience of uh, the operator, we have decreased. But as you can see in this bar, it has been uh, different uh, according to the bar which was used. The balloon expandable bar has lower incidence or lower rate of pacemaker implantation. But when we use self expander, we have as high as close to 40% of the cases or 30 or something like this. And uh, also the, uh, the right bundle branch block and lower implantation have been related with this uh, beyond the experience has been related with this uh, kind of complication. Also, the implantation of the pacemaker has some impact uh, uh, on mortality and hair fa failure during the patient's uh, follow-up. As you can see here in this graph, the recovering of uh, the uh, left ventricular dissection fraction after the implantation of TAVAR is lower when we have implantation of the pacemaker, as you can see here in the uh, um, uh, green uh, line. The incidence of left bundle branch block is also different according to the valve. It's lower with the balloon expandable, but it has been higher when we use also self-expandable valves. And it has been also related with late mortality as is, was shown here in this uh, kind of old paper in circulation in uh, 2012. But then uh, other publications have uh, not demonstrate this, demonstrated this correlation between left bundle block and uh, all cause mortality or cardiac mortality, but they show a relationship with the, the need of the implantation of the pacemaker when we have a left bundle block after uh, uh, the implantation of the TAVAR. In one of the most recent uh, trial in the Evolo low risk trial, as you can see here in this slide, the uh, pacemaker implantation rate was 17% for the TAVAR, in this case, the Evolo valve, and 6% for the surgical uh, repair or actually replacement. Uh, you have to remember these figures. In a, a trial published in 2015, the depth of the implantation was uh, related with the incidence of pacemaker implantation rate. And when we deploy the valve uh, deeper than six millimeter below the annulus, we have a higher uh, pacemaker implantation rate. And uh, also when we use bigger valves, as we, we can see here in this graph, and also with a deeper implantation, we have a high uh, rate of uh, pacemaker implantation uh, after the procedure. And this is uh, why we have been working, uh, especially with Dr. Gemal Gada, who was uh, the doctor who introduced this technique 
about the cusp overlap. When we overlap the, the right and left cusp uh, during the implantation or during the view of the X-ray view of the implantation, to have a better alignment, to see where the conduction system is, uh, which is a little bit more separated from the annulus because we have an elongation of the view of the old VOT. And also we have uh, uh, also uh, the reduce, the reduction, or in a way we removed of the parallax of the valve and uh, we provide a better angulation, even uh, in a very angulated aorta when we see, uh, or when we use this view for the implantation. So this is the castle overlap view. This is the non coronary cast. This is the right and left uh, superposition. This is the three cast planar view that we have been using during the years. And this is the left view with, uh, which we use also during the past for the valve implantation. As you can see uh, in this graph, uh, the conduction system looks uh, uh, lower in the cusp of lab view in comparison with these two views that we use in the past. So actually uh, we are not separated, but we see this space in the LVOT with a, with a better elongation and we can uh, make a more precise implantation. This technique has also another trick that we start in the deployment of the valve above the annulus as it is shown here. This is the pigtail in the aorta and this is the plane of the annulus. And here, this is the, uh, <clears throat> the tip of the valve into the, the, the catheter of the delivery system. So we start the implantation here and we allow the valve to dive in into the LBOT close to three millimeters below the annulus to have a very shallow implantation. With this technique, different publications have shown a significant reduction. You can see here, all of these uh, abstracts presented in the last meetings were below 10%. This is our, uh, our Astra that we made with Dr. Professor Marco Notch and uh, patients from uh, Medicor and patients from Favoloro Foundation presented at TCT Connect 2020. Additionally, in the past uh, few months, we have introduced this technique which allow a better alignment of the valve. So we uh, can uh, provide a better alignment allowing that in the future, especially when we treat the young patients, we can categorize, as it's shown here in this graph, the coronary ostium much easier than we uh, performed in the past. So this is an additional technique that we, we have been using in the past uh, few months, and hopefully uh, we can start using in Slovenia when I get back uh, soon. So that's all the, uh, the tips and tricks that we are using now with these uh, new techniques to get the better uh, outcomes. So with the D, we can determine the cusp of the lab imaging projection, the E, a better access, uh, um, and deep accurately on the non connect cusp. We can reduce the interaction with the conduction system, and we can trust uh, where we are deploying the valve. So we, what we have learned uh, in this uh, kind of S curve, which is made with a, a CT uh, evaluation, we move from here to here, the right uh, oblique view to the caudal view, where we are moving the aorta in this way to overlap these two, two cusps and have a better alignment of the annulus. Uh, and this is in the real life, uh, how we can uh, rotate. This is the aorta is rotating and we can overlap these two ducts and we have the cusp overlap view in the right uh, coda view. Uh, and this is the conventional view that we are using. We still use to see the contact of the valve with the left uh, cusp. So it's a, in a way we have a better patient selection also, uh, we have to uh, make during the uh, CT scan evaluation, we have to choose the working projection as we uh, did uh, in the past when we started this uh, with uh, Professor Marco, with Alesh and Kobiter, uh, uh, they are working at Medicor. So we move from this projection uh, that it 
when we compare with the echo view, it's uh, like a four chamber view. To this view in the X-ray, which in a way is uh, uh, comparable with the three chamber view that we uh, uh, do when we use the echo. This is the master class uh, done by Nico Piazza, uh, who was uh, teaching us about this S curve that we made with the CT scan projections to get this uh, projection for the cusp overlap view. And so we can understand we, what we are doing and why we have different outcomes when we uh, deploy the valve in this uh, projection. We are moving to this uh, view, which is the uh, isolation of the non-coronary cusp. Uh, once again, it's what we are doing with the CT scan evaluation. And here uh, we have a bigger images where you can see much better what I was talking in the, with the past slides, how we can see much better the LVOT in this projection so we can uh, calculate much more, uh, much better where the uh, depth of the valve is into the LVOT. Once again, here is the axis with, with this view we can have a better view so we can separate the, 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 the conduction system and we can calculate the, 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 the depth of the implantation. Once again, we start uh, above the annulus to prevent any contact with the LVOT to prevent any kind of traction there or, or, or damage uh, to prevent uh, uh, any damage, uh, once again, of the conduction system and to decrease the conduction disturbances. In the, LV, uh, uh, in the left view, we can check the contact of the valve with the left uh, cusp, but just to see the contact, not to, uh, uh, <clears throat> to see the depth of the implantation. When we have to evaluate the depth of the implantation, we have to get back to the right view. With this uh, technique, we made this after, presented once again at TCT this year. Here are all the names that you are familiar with you. The, the objective of the study was to analyze the 30-day pacemaker implantation rate after the TAVAR procedure. We collect all the patients before uh, we started with this experience, and then uh, we compare with the patients using the CASP overlap view uh, that were 60 patients. No significant difference uh, in the two pop uh, group of population. <clears throat> the procedure was uh, quite similar, and the outcomes were also similar. We use more predilatation at the beginning of the experience than we are using now. And this is the, uh, once again, and the, the outcome, 30 the outcomes. <clears throat> also with this uh, technique, we are getting or achieving less uh, moderate re uh, aortic regurgitation because we are implanting the valve a little bit higher with the skirt of the valve, we are getting a, a better ceiling. And this is uh, uh, fascinating. As you can observe here, the lower implantation rate when we use the cusp overlap view, 6.6% versus 30% in our uh, uh, historical cohort of patients. And the left bundle branch block was uh, decreased from 19 to close to 5% in the cost cusp overlap view. But we try to avoid the learning curve. So we compare the cusp overlap group with the last 100 patients. And of course, there was a learning curve in the two teams, but the permanent pacemaker implantation rate in this uh, uh, last 100 patients of the conventional group was 18%. And in the cusp overlap uh, group, once again, was 6.6%. Uh, this is the conventional view, uh, more graphical for those who are not familiar with this imaging. And this is the cusp overlap view when, where we get a shallower uh, implantation. This is the first patient we did at Medicore. Uh, this is the cusp overlap view in the real life. We are getting a very shallow implantation rate. This is the final deployment of the valve. These two lines are showing the annulus level. And this is the, the, uh, the deepest part of the valve into the LVOT. Now we are collecting the patients from four institutions, two centers in Argentina, 
Medicor and one hospital in Costa Rica with uh, 50 patients. They have a very good experience. And we are collecting 150 patients, as you can see in the cusp of lab view compared with our uh, historical 100 patients. And as you can see here, the pacemaker implantation rate decreased from 18% to 6.4%. Once again, it's a consistency of the findings in different groups, even not a high volume hospitals. And the left bundle branch block decreased from 13% to 6% in the cusp of lab view. Once again, 156 patients for the four groups. If we uh, get back to this slide in the evolved low risk patient, and we remember the pacemaker implantation rate was in favor of surgery because uh, Corval had 70% uh, and surgical group has 6%. This is quite similar to our outcomes uh, with the cusp overlap uh, 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 view for the implantation. So one of the additional limitation of the TAVAR is cost. If we decrease the use of pacemaker implantation rate, we have or might have better clinical outcomes, but also we can reduce the cost and maybe the reluctancy of the health insurance company for this uh, technology. So in conclusion, I would like to say that CASP of technique has changed the practice by allowing a shallower implantation leading it to a lower conduction disturbances rate and probably, uh, probably also less aortic regurgitation. A lower pacemaker implantation rate would lead to better long-term outcomes and also reducing periprocedural cost. Thank you so much for hearing me and hopefully I can see you uh, soon uh, there uh, in Medicor uh, once again.